if they have had the capability of true space flight, meaning anti-gravity, not, not stupid things like rockets, the shuttle, Saturn V, whatever, if they've had true anti-gravity for 60 years, then obviously if they went to the moon, there are stunning technological secrets and physics secrets to be found and gained there, if only because there will be libraries and they will be translatable libraries because you know, the language of science and physics is all the same. No matter where you are in the universe, it's the same physics. So once you get access to those ancient records from a solar system civilization that I believe is equivalent to Kardashev's famed uh, Type II uh, civilization in his three classes, Remember how the Russian astrophysicist Kardashev um, coined the, the phrase type one, type two, type three? Mm-hmm. Uh, one civilization controls the energy of its planet. A type two controls the energy of its star, meaning its entire solar system. And a type three would control the energies of an entire galaxy. Well, if you have that capability in the hands of primitive Nazis, I mean, God help us. Because by going out into the solar system, they will have had the ability to pick and choose the best of what was left after the cataclysmic effects of millions of years ago, which led to the destruction of this much larger, much more ancient civilization. Again, as we have looked at the data and have tried to put the pieces back together, and that, of course, puts them, as I said, roughly maybe a thousand years ahead of where we are now in terms of capability and accelerating. Mm. So yeah, I think we are facing a absolute breakpoint in civilization. I think this conference is perfectly timed. And again, the good news is we are not totally defenseless because the banksters, to their credit, because they were obviously concerned about being double-crossed at some point as well, appear to have developed a whole bunch of toys that are now being used to confront these guys and to essentially produce some kind of stalemate or standoff, otherwise you and I would not be having this conversation. And it's that unknown, untabulated, undeclared war that we have to explore with all our resources, all of us independent researchers and scientists and policy people in an effort to change the course of history and in fact reassert a human being's right to live here on planet Earth undisturbed. And uh, an unwitting public, um, th- there's a reason why they keep it on, on that level. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people here, in the, and, and again, that uh, it's a lot of, um, uh, you know, manpower, force, and, and, uh, and in, if you want to look at it that way, military or, or, or you know, personnel. Uh, they can't help in any way. Any way. They, they, would that just make the situation worse? Do you think if this, in some way, was announced or, or publicly, you know, declared, uh, declared, somebody put the the cards on the table here and t- told it like it is? Did you ever read the world, the works of Charles Fort? No, I haven't actually. Are you familiar with his works? Some of even it, even by type. Some of it, yeah. Okay, back in I think it was the 30s or 40s, he wrote a book called The Book of the Damned which I thought was a very peculiar title. I think Charles Fort understood what we've been discussing now because he basically makes the statement in that book, we are property. The only way he could explain the anomalies he saw even in those early decades of the 20th century was to come to the conclusion that we are property of someone who has much more muscle and much more capability than human beings currently have. If that's true, then whoever wins this secret war wants us to remain property. And the one thing that would change that equation is if human beings realized they were property. And that's what they're trying to keep us from knowing, and that's our job is to is to promulgate this far and wide with the evidence 
so in fact human beings can reassert their natural heritage to this planet and take back control of their lives and it's not undoable it's just going to be very hard and for a lot of people it's going to be a terrible shock to find out that most of which they've been taught for their entire lives is absolutely flat ass wrong if i can say that on radio you definitely can. Uh, no worries about that, Richard. Is there a timeline here as well uh, th that is being uh, kept? Because some, in some cases, I'm surprised that certain things haven't unfolded, uh, if I put it that way. Uh, and again, how, how bad do you think things are if we look at these cataclysm, cataclysmic cycle that you mentioned before, natural disasters and so forth as well? Is, th is this going to increase now then and is that does that play into this idea of, of uh, a timeline being kept here uh, richard um i believe so i think i think for for a kind of useful rule of thumb for the model we can say that this is all pegged to 2012. that the, the, the clock is ticking down to 2012 because that's when some major geophysical problem could occur on earth that would quietly eliminate most of their their population problem and by not alerting the appropriate authorities or giving them on earth the appropriate technology to deal with that physics they can basically wash their hands and say look it wasn't us it was just nature and they were too damn dumb and stupid to figure it out in time to save themselves right in other words it's a very clever head game now why would that kind of a game need to go on that raises the question, is there a larger civilization out there in the galaxy watching, seeing who is going to do what, who is going to win, and is there some kind of prime directive in operation, a la my friend Gene, where they cannot intervene directly, but if we ask for help, if we if we understand that we're not alone, if we take certain measures to assert that new knowledge, they in fact are then allowed to intervene and and help us, you know, keep these these beasts at bay. Um, our vice president yesterday made a very interesting uh, uh, case. He actually used a term that I have not heard for a long time. He talked about barbarians at the gate and everyone thought he was talking in a certain direction about events occurring politically here in the united states i'm wondering if in fact he was talking to a, another audience about a different set of barbarians who in fact are at the gates unless we take drastic action and uh, become very much more self-aware